Now, what I want to do is move to this new treatment that you are rolling out in all of your clinics. And what is so shocking on the conversation of LP little a was that mine was at my LP little a was at 60. And then I did one session of total plasma exchange. And the next day when we tested it, it went down to, I think, 32. Mm -hmm. So explain to me what total plasma exchange is and why. I think it's probably exciting for a lot of things, but it seems like it, it, from what I can tell off of searching this on, you know, doing Google searches and chat GPT searches, that they're really thinking of total plasma exchange as a real treatment for LP little a. Mm -hmm. Okay, so plasma exchange, maybe it'd be helpful to talk about a little bit of the history of it and how yeah, it's done. Please, yeah, please, yeah, because that's interesting too. Yeah, so plasma exchange is a treatment that we've had in the hospital for about 50 years now. I remember being in medical school and we would use it for really severe situations, things like autoimmune crisis yep. where someone's autoimmune disease was completely out of control and they were in the ICU and they were intubated and, and we needed to do something to save their life. We also used it for things like drug overdosages when people took too much mm. of their heart medication and to filter out the drug. Oh, okay? interesting. So the way plasma exchange works is we basically hook you up to an IV. We're removing some of your blood and then we're putting it in a giant centrifuge. For people that have seen PRP, they know that when you put blood in a centrifuge, it separates into its components mm. of plasma and blood cells. Okay. okay. And with this machine that does this for you, all of your blood, we're reinfusing your blood cells, your right, your red blood cells and your white blood cells. We're reinfusing those. Okay. And we're taking the plasma out completely. Okay. And that plasma is then basically thrown out. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, you were holding a bag of your yeah, plasma. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, and it's I, like and three I, we, liters. We'll post pictures of that, especially yeah. on our YouTube channel where this will be visual. But it's really remarkable to, to when you hold up all the stuff that just came out of you. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so what the really important piece here is replacing that plasma with albumin. Albumin is a protein that our body naturally makes. And the reason we have to replace the plasma is that protein in your plasma creates what's called an oncotic gradient in your blood vessels. So all of the fluid stays within your blood vessels. Okay. okay. And so we have to replace it with albumin. And so that's what we did for you. Right. It's about a two to three hour treatment. Actually it's less than two hours yeah, for most people. It was like an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. And during that time we do one therapeutic exchange of one plasma volume. Okay. okay. And so the treatment as you had done is very comfortable. A lot of people have the misconception that we take out all your blood and you're basically laying there with no blood. No, That's not true. That, can't, that, someone, you wouldn't, that wouldn't be possible. That wouldn't be possible. Yeah. It's only about 100 cc's at a time. Someone yeah. asked me like, what if the electricity dies and the machine dies and all my blood is out of me? I'm like... No, oh my God, it's only that's like 100 funny. cc's yeah, at a time. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> so people have been doing plasma exchange for literally five, six decades. It's extremely safe. It's an FDA-approved modality that's okay. been used in hospitals. We're using it at, as an outpatient, which means you can have it done at our clinic, right. and then you can go home right afterwards. And so it has a lot of benefits to it because what lives in your plasma yeah, is – your cholesterol. So mm. we use it a lot for what's called familial hypercholesterolemia, where mm -hmm. someone has the genetic um, abnormality, the massively elevated levels of cholesterol. Mm. We use it for that. We use, we're now using it for LP little a. We're using it for people that have high levels of toxins build up mm -hmm. in their system from environmental toxins, immune disturbances as mm -hmm. well, people with autoimmune conditions. So there's a lot of potential applications. And what's really cool about it is we're not giving you a medication. Right. We're not adding something something to you like a chemical. We're just removing the bad stuff right. the way I like to describe it. So if I walked into my doctor's office mm -hmm. and they're like, you need to go on a statin because your cholesterol is high. And if I went and did a TPE, then is technically, would that be like cleaning my cholesterol system out? Can we use it? Like, let's say I didn't want to go on a statin. Could I use it as a way to prevent going on a long-term statins? I don't think so. I think that, you know, the answer to that question is we don't know. Right. But in reality, doing plasma exchange over and over again to remove cholesterol from your bloodstream when you have a minimally elevated cholesterol, yep. we don't really know if that's what the risk benefit ratio for that right. is, right? Because this is a procedure. Like right. even though we're just putting an IV in you and we're doing this procedure, there's still 
risk of even putting an IV in, right? right? Which you don't have that risk by taking a pill. Right. So the answer, the that's a long way of saying we don't know. Right. However, yeah. I don't think that that would be an acceptable replacement for like a statin. Right. Now, in certain situations like familial hypercholesterolemia where statins are not going to drive your cholesterol low enough for long periods, it's definitely very useful. Okay. And now we're also seeing with LP little a being useful as well. In fact, the American Heart Association, I, I said yeah. that, put out a guidance saying we should really think about using plasma exchange for LP little a. So the other interesting thing is the nurse that helped me, Jojo? Jojo. Jojo told me that when he had his TPE, that his cholesterol was high, and then the post-blood work, the cholesterol went down. But what was shocking is he could no longer tolerate bad oils, Mm. that his taste buds, his smell, and what he used to eat was some of that stuff was packed with bad oils, which might have been, you know, authentically increasing his bad cholesterol. He said that he really noticed that his cravings for oils changed, which really made me look at this treatment as – it's not just a quick fix kind of thing. It's actually changing. I mean, in my situation, I don't eat bad oils, but it could change the way in which you live your life because it changes what your behaviors are. Have you? Do you have any evidence of that in other areas? I, I, I don't, but, you know, I'm always surprised with the mind-body connection yeah. and what our brain – um, senses that we have no idea how it's sensing it. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just mind blowing. It's to so me. It's some of these fascinating. Changes. It really is. I will tell you though that we are seeing epigenetic changes with plasma exchange. So okay. when we measure biological signs of aging using epigenetic markers, even markers of individual organ health, like heart health, liver health, mm. et cetera, we're seeing age reversal of biological age for organs using epigenetic marker testing. Okay. Wow. So that's that's really mind blowing to, yep. to see this. And also we're seeing people with high LP little A keep their LP little A low for six to eight weeks. So wow. yeah. And so this is something that we're seeing. We probably have like five or six people that we're currently treating yep. with LP little A and plasma exchange. So you know it might not be true for everybody. Yep. Everyone's biology is individual. How quickly you make it, how quick Interesting. You know, how your yeah. body is naturally taking care of it. But it's been pretty long lasting. Now, what we don't know, and I was talking to you about this before, is we don't have the research saying that plasma exchange prevents heart attacks in people with right. LP little a. That's a study that has not been done, yeah. right? That's a massive study. It's going to take a lot of individuals, a lot of funding, yeah. a lot of follow up to, to, to understand yeah. that. Yeah. However, we do know that LP little a that's elevated and the vast majority of people causes early heart disease. Right. And so anything that we can do to keep it down, I think is beneficial. Yeah. And we, I, I know that I'm coming in to get a second treatment yes. that will be about four weeks from the first treatment. And so we'll see. I mean, we're kind of guinea pigging me as well wow. to like see if that LPA has stayed down because my lifestyle is pretty impeccable. I mean, the only thing exactly. I probably would change would be stress levels. But, you know, I, I do. I <laughs> live in a, Yeah, right. I live in a modern world. So, right, right. so, so I'm really in, encouraged to see how long term this will work for people. And again, if it can save a heart attack or a stroke, it's, it's just profound. And see, Mindy, your mindset around this is perfect because you're looking at yourself as an N of one. Yeah. And you're you're also expecting that maybe we do a couple of these treatments and it might yeah. not make a difference. Then right. we need to seek out another treatment modality. That's, right. That's how you have to look at all of this in medicine now. And, you know, we're so trained to waiting for the randomized controlled drug trial to yeah. tell us what we should and we shouldn't do. And I think that's been helpful in this whole drug development world or pharma yeah. world, yeah. but it's not helpful in, in the real world of medicine yes. to treat everything that way. Yeah, right? well said, well said. Yeah.